this section covers fuel consumption. A primary skill the instrument pilot must master is estimating fuel consumption. Generally, if done correctly, you'll land with plenty of fuel, or if unable to land at the destination, there is plenty of fuel left to land at an alternate airport. Solving fuel consumption requires three components. First, calculating ground speed. Second, finding time en route. And calculating your total fuel used. Do you think there's any life left in the E6B? I would like to think there is. At least I hope there is. The E6B computer allows a pilot to literally draw a wind triangle. And he gets to visualize the relationship between airspeed, wind speed and direction, and where he's going. I know that you can just punch in a few numbers on a calculator and get the same results even more accurately, but you don't have the sense of what the wind is doing to the airplane. You don't think in terms of crab angles and drift angles as you do when using an E6B. I think the E6B is essential for learning the relationship between wind track and the airplane, what it's doing. I would like to think that the E6B has a lot of life left, but something tells me that it doesn't, simply because we're moving so rapidly into the computerized age uh, that if it doesn't happen automatically, pilots aren't going to be, uh, are going to become impatient with it. Uh, I used to teach, and I still like to teach new students to actually draw wind triangles right on the chart and get a sense of what's happening, the relationship between wind and, and the aircraft. And the E6B helps to do that. But the calculator, it's so easy to stroke a wrong key and come up with the wrong information. And if you don't have a good sense of what to expect as an answer, you might rely on the wrong one. Now let's take a look at an FAA test question and use this knowledge to work through a solution. All right, back into the studio for a question on our final topic. We're going to ask you to refer to figures 21, 22, and 24, which the FAA will provide. What fuel would be consumed on the flight between Grand Junction, Colorado and Durango, Colorado if the average fuel consumption is 15 gallons per hour, or GPH? All right, the answer is one of these three. But we have to go to first to figure 21, which establishes our altitude of 15,000 feet. We go to figure 22, our flight log, and we check the flight log. The wind is given as 230 degrees at 8 knots. The course is given as 151 degrees magnetic. Convert it to true course by applying the magnetic variation 14 degrees to get a true course of 165 degrees. Now, the true airspeed for your aircraft, as shown here, is 175 knots. Enter the true airspeed into your flight computer and apply the wind correction. The result is a ground speed of 171 knots. Now in figure 24, we find the time en route. The en route low altitude chart shows the leg from Herm intersection to Manka intersection is 75 nautical miles, right there. Now using our flight computer, we calculate the time for the second leg as 26 minutes and 20 seconds. The first leg and last leg are already provided for you in figure 22. The first leg is given as 24 minutes, and the last leg is given as 18 minutes and 30 seconds. By adding them together, the total time en route is 1 hour, 8 minutes, and 50 seconds. Now, find the total fuel burn. Using our flight computer, we set fuel burn at 15 gallons per hour. Calculate the total fuel burn for 1 hour and 9 minutes as 17.2 gallons. The answer, of course, is A as most correct. The total fuel burn for one hour and nine minutes is 17.2 gallons.